And that is my 12 volt system. So everything 12 volt is running off of this bar here. So all the lights, everything like that, that I have wired up my max air fan, all of that is being run into here. That is running to the DC here, this SDC to there, and that to the solar slash car charger. The DJI 2000 was recently released. I made a video on it, and in that video, I swapped the 2000 into my Sprinter van for the 1000. But before I had the DJI 1000 in there, I had this guy. The EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. This was the van's power station for about six months. I switched from this to the DJI 1000, and now I have switched to the 2000. And in making those videos, a lot of you asked, why did I choose the DJI 2000 over the EcoFlow, essentially 2000, and, and which one's better? Today, I'm gonna go through the pros and cons of both. We're really gonna just kinda compare them against each other, and I will talk about through that why this one made more sense for me. Now, for some people, this one might make more sense for you. Everyone's got a different setup, but uh, yeah, for me, the DJI 2000 makes the most sense, and uh, here's why. First up, something that they both have in common, they are both LFP batteries, which is lithium iron phosphate or lithium ferrophosphate. You'll hear kind of all those three terms interchangeably talked about, and that is both of these have that. What that means is that the battery life cycle is super, super long. These guys say 3,000 full cycles, and these guys say 4,000 full cycles. I imagine that they're about the same, like maybe they're both 3,500 cycles, but they're both LFP batteries. So I don't understand why this one would be rated for 3,000 cycles and this one for 4,000 cycles before degrading. I, I imagine that that performance is probably more similar to each other. But either way, they're both gonna last a very long time. Now they are both 2,048 watt hours inside. So both of them have the exact same storage, the exact same style of battery. So essentially the same long lifespan and they both can hook up to additional battery banks. With the EcoFlow, we've got these little bits here that open up so that you can hook this into an expansion battery and expand the system. And then on the DJI, we use those SDC ports right there to hook up expansion batteries. Now, here's where the first big difference comes in. This guy can be expanded with up to two additional expansion batteries. So you can go up to 2,048 times three, using my cheat sheet, 6,144 watt hours that you can kind of build this into a system. Now, this guy does the same thing. It hooks up to 2,048 watt hour batteries, but this thing can hook up to up to 10 expansion batteries. So if you wanted to use this as like the main unit for a home backup system, you can get up to 22,528 watt hours out of this. So that is that is essentially this system here, like this main unit, the DJI Power 2000, and 10 of their 2,048 watt hour expansion battery packs. So, so some, some future growth, again, both, both good, like 6,000 watt hours, good, 22,000 watt hours, slightly better. Then they both have fast charging in them. This guy can go zero to 80% in 68 minutes, while the DJI does zero to 80% in 55 minutes, so a little faster. The times when that kind of comes into play, like more in a van setup, is if I have like full clouds for a couple of weeks on end and I'm not driving my car, because we'll talk about how I'm powering either of these with my car, but if I was to have super low battery and I just needed a quick charge, I can just pull this unit out of my van, pull it inside to either my house or somewhere that I'm staying at, plug it into AC, and in 55 minutes, I will have full 80% battery to run off of. So input, they can both charge very quickly. The output is the big difference here. Now this guy has a built-in 2400 watt inverter, which means that I can power off of this unit up to 2400 watts of stuff. So if my computer is pulling 140 watts and then I got a bunch of other stuff that's pulling a few hundred watts here and there, up to 2400 watts can all together be pulled off of this at once. Now, this guy jumps up to 3000 watts. So a 3000 watt inverter, like that's bigger than what most people put in their vans. Most people are putting like a 2000 watt inverter in their van. So having this in the van, I can now be pulling up to 3000 watts 
off this unit at once. And when we get to the ports, you'll see why that's important. Uh, but as a note, this guy does have something called X boost. Now, I don't know too much about it. Here's the deal. It can X boost up to 3,400 watts. And how it does it, it is, it is like down regulating the voltage of your device in order to give it more watts from the system. All I've heard is that yes, this thing can do this X boost thing to 3,400 watts, but the things that you're plugging into this while you do that, um, I don't wanna say are at risk, but may be susceptible to some weirdness with that like voltage dropping thing. If someone on here knows more about how like that X boost system works, uh, drop it in the comments. But the inverter in here is a 2400 watt inverter and then it's using this X boost voltage shift to create that 3400 watts while this is a true 3000 watt inverter in the DJI. So for me, that was a that was one of the big sell points. Okay, uh, before we jump into the ports, let's talk about car charging because that is very important if you're doing something like me, putting this inside of my van. So on this guy, they have an alternator charger that is an 800 watt alternator charger. So you're gonna set that alternator charger up, runs to your car battery, and then your alternator will charge the unit while you drive. Again, up to 800 watts. And then you can also be running solar into this at the same time. You would just run it through the solar ports. This guy though, with their solar car charger, it uses up one SDC port and it is a solar and alternator charger. So it's one unit that both my solar is running into and the alternator charger is going into, and then that can charge this up to 1800 watts. So powering this guy off of my alternator and solar, it just seems more concise and a little bit cleaner of a setup than having to run an alternator charger and a solar run into here. With this guy, again, I'm doing both of those through their 1.8 kilowatt solar slash car charger. I wouldn't say that's a, a huge reason that I went for this guy, but it, it is definitely on the list of reasons. Okay, let's jump to ports on the EcoFlow on the front of the unit, and we'll talk about how this is. We basically have some ports on the front and some ports on the back. On the front here, let's get it turned on. We have a nice screen up front. And on here, I have two USB-C ports that are both 100 watt ports. Now that is really good. I really do appreciate that there are 100 watt ports on here, but then I have four USB-A ports, which is kind of, I don't know. I don't use anything USB-A anymore, so I wish both of these units would get rid of the USB-A port ports and only have USB-C ports. But again, it is nice to have two 100 watt ports on here for USB-C. And then the two USB-A ports are 12 watts. And then two that are called fast charge are 18 watts. 18 watts, it's not super fast, but it, it, it's faster than 12. And this is kind of where like one of the big purchasing decisions for me came was that on this guy, I have four USB-C ports and four USB-A ports. Now, two of the USB-C ports are 140 watt ports and the other two are 65 watt ports. So that means that I am, I am never bringing like my computer brick with me. I can just plug my MacBook Pro straight into this and I will have that wattage without having to carry a, a brick around. Now the USB-A ports also kind of quick. It's four ports USB-A at 24 watts. So over here, the USB-A's are 12 and 18. And over there, all four of them are 24 watts. The, the ports is probably, it's one of the big reasons that I went this route for this thing, uh, the 3000 watt inverter and now the ports. But there are more ports on here. So let's jump to the AC ports. Now on this unit, we only have three AC ports, but we also have a 30 amp port. So if you are running an RV and you wanna use this as a backup system to your RV or your trailer, this, you can just plug a 30 amp port directly into this and power your RV. That is a pretty slick and unique thing. Now on this guy, the AC ports are not on the same side, they're on the back side, so you gotta turn the thing around, but check that out. You do have six AC ports, and six AC, like if you're plugging things in like AC, um, six ports, that's pretty great. And instead of a RV style port, like the 30 amp, on here the extra port is a, 
car DC charger. So you can run your DC system directly into this if you're doing something like me where I have like a little bus bar system or a, a little fuse box that goes straight into here. Mine goes into, I'll talk about how I do it on that, but I would just plug it straight into here. That would go up to all of my DC 12 volt stuff and then from there out to any appliances. So that is kind of nice to have that like built in on the DJI, how they do it is these SDC ports. So I have two SDC ports and they can kind of do all sorts of things because of the adapters. So how mine is set up is I have two SDC ports on the main unit and then the expansion unit that's hiding back there has two SDC ports. So the expansion unit has one cable that's going from it to here. I have a solar car charger that's mounted there. Again, this will all be hidden under a bench, but that is running to the expansion battery, expansion battery to the main unit. And then from the main unit here, I have this DC adapter. So it basically turns from SDC into this bit, which is running up to that bit there. And that is my 12 volt system. So everything 12 volt is running off of this bar here. So all the lights, everything like that, that I have wired up my max air fan, all of that is being run into here. That is running to the DC here, this SDC to there, and that to the solar slash car charger. Then under this panel right here is my AC power port. So if I'm trying to charge this off of the wall power in there, I plug in there, plug into the wall. I can change from fast charge to slow charge if I don't wanna like pop a breaker, but I almost always have it on fast charge. And then over here, you lift up this little flap here and here is my spot where I would charge this up from AC and my two spots to charge it from solar. Now the other down here, there's two three amp DC ports. I don't have anything to plug into those. I'm not sure, I'm not sure who's using three amp DC ports, but if you are, put it down in the description so I understand why is why are those two ports on there? Who's using that? Is it you? Okay, so the EcoFlow system, again, it's a good system. One thing though that was a big sell point for me is how it fits in my van. Now, what I like about this, the reason that I, the main reason that I switched to the DJI 1000 and now the 2000 is that everything is on one side. About why, why having everything on one side may or may not be a big deal for you. For me, how this whole van is gonna be set up is this is going to be a bench over here. So all of this will be hidden under the bench. This will be inside the bench and then a bench on that side as well. So what that means is that I'm going to essentially on the bench have a panel here that I can pop off. And because everything is on one side of the DJI Power 2000, I can see everything at once. My big issue when I had the EcoFlow in here was that I had this stashed in here and either I was hiding this side or hiding this side. So I would kind of try to like put it in sideways like this and then I could see this side but I couldn't see this side and anything that I, every time I needed to get something from this side I would have to pull the whole unit out to either plug something in or, or kind of get to something back here and then jam it back in again with the DJI whether I have the station faced this way or if I end up having it faced kind of out the back I will be able to see everything that's plugged in and all of my controls uh, from one side. Having everything on one side, being able to just kind of open up one little panel and plug and unplug everything from one spot, uh, that that was definitely a big sell point for me. Price-wise, uh, this guy is on sale down to, I think, $9.99 right now, and I think this guy is sitting at $12.99. I think when it launched, there was a deal on it, and I think it was cheaper at launch, like the first however many people got it at a discount. Uh, now it is sitting at $12.99 on DJA's site. So there is a $300 swing to go from here to here, but for me, one, everything's on one side. This thing has a 3000 watt inverter instead of a 2400 watt inverter. I have ports on here with 140 watt USB-C and 65 watt USB-C. So four USB-C ports on this guy. I've only got two and they're both 100 watts. I've got more USB-A ports on this guy. Again, I don't really plug in things via USB-A. And then again, uh, for me, the alternator slash solar charger, being able to pump up to 1800 watts charging this thing has been, um, it's basically just meant I have never had to pull this out of my van to charge it or like run an extension cable out to the van to charge this unit up. But yeah, that is why, that is why like of two 
really good units. Like both of them are good units. Both of them 2048 watt hours. Both of them can have expansions. Again, this guy can have way more expansions, has a bigger inverter, has higher powered ports. And again, for me, everything is on one side. There might be a system, like if, if someone's out there and they're like, dude, how I have mine set up, this works having some ports on one side and some ports on the other. Uh, and then the expansion ports are on the side of the unit. I, I can't imagine the scenario where that works better, but um, if that is your setup and you're like, dude, that I had to go for that because it's split, uh, let me know. Let me know like, what your setup is and how this is better for you. To which every of my teachers said that I won't have a calculator in your pocket at all times. Yes, I will. 8,192 watt hours. If I put two more expansion batteries in here, I would have 8,192 watt hours. That, that'd be pretty dope.